what are you looking at? Come on in. <laughs> are you happy this morning? Do you want to go see the Lola girl? What the heck is happening? What the heck is that big black thing? She's watching me do some computer work. <laughs> We're sending out some coffee emails and she's loving it. Are you happy today? <laughs> yeah. If any of you guys are new around here or maybe this is your first time watching one of our videos, then you might not know that Kaylee and I have a coffee business. And we live in a town that produces arguably the best coffee in the world. It's up there in the top two or three. So we gotta go do some business. I got my one bean at a time shirt on, which I figure like is pretty fitting. Oh, I did wear it to bed last night, but. <laughs> and Panama people don't really care if you smell a little bit. That's true, that's true. <laughs> We drove all the way to the other side of the volcano to come here. We're at Jansen's Coffee Farm. Look at this place, it is beautiful. And we're here to do some business. We're here to buy some of the most rare coffee in the whole world. This is what we're here for. Here's all the coffee being laid out to dry. You can see these two different colors. These are two different drying processes. This yellow white coffee here is a washed coffee. What you're seeing is the actual bean that you, when you pull coffee out of your bag and you see those brown beans, these are those exact beans but they're just not roasted yet. That's why they're white and they're yellow. Where this over here, this is natural coffee and why it's red is the fruit is still intact and all the sugars of that fruit are now being absorbed into those beans and then all that fruit will be stripped off so you get a sweeter cup. So if you like sweeter coffee, natural's more for you, but if you like that like chocolatey, cacao, I think it tastes a little bit like marshmallows. If you like those kind of flavors in your coffee, the wash is more for you. So this is the coffee that we're here to buy. This is a geisha coffee. All of this is geisha coffee. And that's one of the rarest coffees you find in the world. And one of the sought after coffees here in Panama. With every coffee that we buy, we always come to where it's grown. And we want to see everything from not only how it's being dried, to how it's being grown and how the trees look. And these are the exact trees of the coffee that we're gonna buy. And so far, they look pretty pretty dang healthier as, as yeah. Arturo says, they look sexy, boy. They look sexy. So something you'll notice with these trees specifically is even though they're really, really tall, there's a lot less fruit on them than your typical coffee plants. And the reason being is geisha actually yields only one fifth of the amount of coffee than a typical coffee plant. Also, it takes double the amount of time. So for geisha, it takes four to five years for fruit to actually even start producing on the plant. So basically, geisha is just a much, much harder coffee plant to grow. That ends our time at the Jansen Coffee Farm. We're heading out of here. How much geisha did we buy from these guys? We bought 300 kilograms, 660 pounds. We bought 660 pounds of geisha wash from these guys. Now it's time to go roast it. We're back in the coffee lab now. We have the geisha from Jansen's. We're gonna start roasting it up. Does this make you excited, Arturo? Of course. Oh, you know, you know how this makes me feel. <laughs> Don't play with my feelings. <laughs> now, you see, if, if we do a thorough examination, there are no broken beans. Da, 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 Ooh, you hear that sound, baby? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so with this coffee in particular, we're actually roasting it in much smaller batches. So it's four pound batches and we're roasting it to accentuate certain flavors. And roasting coffee isn't really like baking cookies. There's a lot of science to it. I know we've been talking a big game about this geisha, but geisha, it isn't like typical coffee, just like how champagne isn't like wine. This is like, this is like the champagne of wine. How else would you compare it? Well, it is a very high-end, very delicate version of the coffee. 
So if you are expecting it to punch you in the face, to wake you up in the morning, you rather look for another one of our options. So we named this coffee Genesis, kind of as like a celebration of the new year, yeah. our new beginning, Sadie's new beginning. Woo! all this stuff kind of in one. So if any of you guys want to try it out, we have a very limited quantity available, but there's a link down in the description if you want to try it out. Just a reminder. What's up, Arturo? Hola, amigos. Like the roasting area. Yeah, but we were gonna have it like down. Once the sun sets and we're done with work for the day, we come in the workshop and kind of just keep going. We're working on opening up a coffee roastery in Stowe, Vermont, back in the United States. The coffee bar is 17.16 feet long. For those of you guys that are new around here, we've been working on this for a while now. I just, I would like to um, go to these farms. Guatem the one in Guatemala, the one in Costa Rica, and the one in Colombia. And we have a whole crew of people that are helping us work on this. We have two general managers. We have our two landlords who are also a part of the business. We have Arturo. We have an amazing team. And we're, but we're all kind of being a part of this from different parts of the world. But we're all working together to make this thing a reality. So every single week we hop on a Zoom call and we go through all of the details. We lay out everything that needs to be done before October 1st. We have a very, very, very long checklist. Right now we're working on the design of the space and like laying everything out. So I'll show you guys a little bit of what the interior looks like. This little design that we've been working on so you can get a little look before you see it in real life on October 1st when we go back to the States and Open this damn roastery! What's up, Mr. Coffee? Good morning. I wake up to worm coffee. Uh huh. Pacamara. Are you drinking a bunch of coffee today? Oh, yes. A bunch of coffee. Yeah, yeah. That's he Hi. We're gonna be going to a lot of cafes today. And this is the first stop of many. And the reason being is we're basically doing research. We wanna gather as many ideas and pieces of inspiration that's going to help us really, really kind of refine exactly what we wanna do at our roastery up in Vermont. Just a little bit of advice for you guys when you're making your coffee in the morning. The grinder is everything. Okay, it's not everything, but it's a lot. If you guys aren't using a good grinder, get a good grinder. It's gonna make your coffee taste so much better. And you'll probably end up going with a manual grinder like this because the electric ones are really, really expensive. And if you're just getting into coffee, these manual grinders are like 50 or 60 bucks. So one of the most amazing things about the coffee company that we have is we actually get to visit the farms that our coffee is grown because we live in the town that all of the coffee is grown. How come every time I see you, you're in a new car? People, people are going to start it, saying it, that you are dealing drugs, it's, bro. It's, it's not even mine. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 just, you just Grand Theft Auto to Picanto? <laughs> you did, didn't you? You, I, you know, I, I'm in a need for speed. <laughs> Every farm that we buy coffee from, we go to and we look at the exact lot where the coffee was grown. And we're buying 950 pounds of Pacamar coffee that all came from right here. And if you guys don't know, this is our coffee partner, Arturo. And we're gonna give you a little 30 second coffee lesson from the coffee professional himself. So I wouldn't say I'm a professional, but I'm learning as I go. The Pacamara is known for having huge leaves and huge trees as well but this is a new crop so you can see the plant is definitely smaller but if we look at the uh, the fruit right here there's no doubt that it is a pacamara this is a special moment of the year because it's a uh, it's a, what they call the blossom time this will tell you how good or how healthy is your new, new harvest going to be and we see lots of flowers and we're very happy for it. So we bring the coffee directly from the farm to our little roastery here in Bogete. We roast the coffee in micro batches, four pounds at a time. Which ensures that the coffee is the best possible 
flavorful and as tasteful as it can be. And then all the coffee is hand selected by Arturo and his family here on this table, one bead at a time. It's bagged up in these bags, a label's put on it, and it's shipped to my mom's house in the United States. Where my best friend Sarah, shout out to you girl, fulfills all of the orders there and then gets directly sent to you guys. There's no middlemen involved, there's no massive corporations involved. Even our bags are made in the United States. They're not pumped out of some factory in China. We really care about every process. Every single detail. All along the way. So this coffee, this Pacamara from Bonita Springs is called Baby Blossom. It looks exactly like this. By the time we put this video out, it's gonna have just landed in the United States. It's ready to ship out. Super fresh. So if you guys wanna try it, there's a link in the description below. We just drove for about three and a half hours all through the most, some of those beautiful landscapes I've ever seen in my life. This place is just so special. Just like looking out and just seeing nothing for miles and miles and miles has just been, this has been such an awesome drive. And we just came to this little town tucked in the mountains and we're here to buy a whole bunch of coffee. This town is called Boabati and where we are is basically like kind of like their town hall and they formed a co-op of all the coffee farmers here so there's all these independent coffee farmers who have all come together to sell their coffee together and basically negotiate together and barter together because a lot of these people have been taken advantage of for years and years and years. Así como me dijo el amigo que que venía y se lo llevaba como crédito Ajá. y no y no sí, pagaba. Sí. Bueno, nosotros vendía café que como un compañero dijo así mismo nos vendía café la gente venía preguntar café a nosotros nosotros lo vendía pero lo llevaba así. Así. Ah, así ah, sin sin, Ajá. sin saber. Ajá, sí. Sin saber. And we formed a relationship with all these coffee farmers here. This is now two years in a row and they saved all their coffee for us knowing that we were gonna come back and knowing that we're gonna buy all of it for them. And this is such a win-win relationship for all of us because we have been looking for good organic coffee for three years now. It's such a challenge to find organic coffee at a reasonable price. Sometimes it's 50, 60, 70, $100 a pound. But because they have so much land here, they can pull it off and they can get by with plants dying and with disease and with insects and with bugs. They can take that loss and still produce all their coffee 100% organic. This guy just goes right for the coffee, just reaches his hand in there, pulls it out. Start talking dirty to the coffee Arturo, is that what you're doing already? We're checking humidity, look. We're checking for the green color. This is probably around 11%. So we've loaded up over a thousand pounds of coffee in our two cars. Now we need to drive back the same way that we came. <laughs> so we're bringing all this coffee in. We're bringing it to our roastery here, down in downtown Boguete, where Arturo works very hard with our little two kilo roaster. And now that we have this thousand pounds of coffee, he's gonna get right to work on roasting this coffee. We're calling it La Comarca as kind of like a tribute to the area that we work. And just to let you know, we have something special this time. We're actually gonna be offering pre-ground coffee. So if you buy ground coffee, if you like your coffee already pre-ground, we now have that as an option. So if you wanna try this coffee out, all the information is down in the description. But just a disclaimer, today's Monday, we just got this coffee. This video is coming out on Wednesday. We are roasting it now. We're roasting it as fresh as we possibly can. So it might take a little bit to get to you guys. 
on our website, we'll kind of put the dates on when we expect you should have it. Things. <laughs> You know, I've heard a lot of talk about low acid coffee recently, and here's a little trick. If you just pour less water on your first pour when you're doing a pour over, you can make your coffee less acidic. So you can see I just poured 30 grams here. That'll help you for those of you out there that don't like acidic coffee. I'll make it a little bit more, maybe a little bit more balanced. When we've showed how we make coffee in our YouTube videos, some people say, I can't believe you do that for every single time you make coffee. And let me just show you. Two minutes and 30 seconds. That's all it takes. Two minutes and 30 seconds. I know the set and forget of a drip maker is very, very convenient or a cake cup is very, very convenient, but it's worth it to make it that much more delicious, especially when you have delicious coffee. We are going to need a lot of coffee today. And the good news is we have 900 pounds of coffee. We just bought 900 pounds of coffee from a farm that's just a couple miles that way. This is a Tipico washed and it is just like the smoothest, most delicious everyday drinking coffee. We've had a lot of, we've bought a lot of wild coffees. We've sold a lot of wild coffees that are fermented, sweet, fruity. But this time we want to kind of get back to the roots of a traditional coffee and this one is just delicious. For those of you guys that don't know, Kaylee and I have a coffee business called The Morning Movement and we get a lot of questions how we support ourselves and how we were able to buy this land and have these employees and our coffee business is honestly a big reason why we're able to do all that. So we have a little coffee roaster down in town. We employ some of the locals. That's why we want to roast all the coffee here ourselves so we could bring jobs to this town and then we ship that coffee off to my mom's house and we have a couple people in the states that are working with us as well and this whole small business that we built has just been amazing and we just want to continue to keep growing it just a little bit bigger we don't want to get super massive but we're gonna to need to move our business out of my mom's house and that's coming soon. So if you guys wanna drink this Tipico wash with us each morning, we just listed it up on our website. We have very limited bags available. And once you place an order, we're gonna start roasting it right then. The thing about washed coffee is you can't mess around with it. You have to get it as fresh as possible. So it is gonna take a little bit to get to you guys, but just know it's in the effort of trying to get it to you as fresh as humanly possible. And for all you guys that have been supporting our coffee business, thank you so much. It means the world to us. It allows this whole farm to exist, and I talk for everyone on Lola's farm when I just say thank you for all your support. It's been 953 days since we first bought this piece of land on the side of a mountain in Panama. And while we've definitely had our fair share of challenges up here, this was one of those weeks that just really tested us. With raising six goats, six dogs, eight chickens, an eight month old baby, and countless construction projects, all while running a Panamanian coffee business from our little 250 square foot home. We know we're gonna need more help up here on Lola's farm. We're gonna keep growing this off-grid sustainable community and bring new people in, but right now in this moment, it's just hard to feel like we're not just barely keeping our head above water. Today's one of the biggest days of our entire lives. And some people might think that what we're doing today is reckless, dangerous, unnecessary. Today we're gonna go someplace that doesn't have roads, doesn't have electricity, doesn't have internet. We're gonna go deep into the jungle of Panama. We're gonna go to where the Nobe Bugle tribe lives, the indigenous people of Panama. We're gonna go there. We got Arturo, we got Dolly, both people who you guys have met before. We also have Sarah. And we also have TJ. These are two people who you guys have never met before, but have been a part of our business now, been a part of the morning movement business for a few months. And they're here to train, and we're here just to kind of like show them everything about our business and everything that we do. You go right there, Savoy. Savoy. Nice. When we started our coffee business, one thing that we really wanted to do was to buy all of our green coffee directly from the farms. We didn't want to go through middlemen, we didn't want to go through suppliers and providers and importers and go through all that. We really want to practice direct trade because it's best for everyone. Not only is it best for the farm, but it's best for us too. So when we heard that 
the people of the Nobe tribe, when we heard that they had coffee in the Camarca, we really wanted to support them directly. And last year, some of you guys may have seen, we took a trip to the Camarca and we made contact with a family who had a coffee farm. And we showed up and we met the family, we talked to them, we saw how they grew their coffee, we saw they did it organically, and they did it with respect to the land. So what we ended up doing was buying all of their coffee. We bought their whole year's harvest and brought it back to our lab and roasted it and sent it out and shipped it out. And the coffee was called La Nina because there was this little girl that was a part of this family that was just so inspirational for us. At the time, Kaylee was pregnant and she just kind of played like such a big role because we almost saw her as like our baby that was to be. Like we just started thinking about our child that was gonna come. It's just this year's been a little bit different. We've kind of lost contact with the father who is like our main contact person of the family. We don't know if the, if La Nina or, or Didion, the girl, we don't know if she's gonna be there. We don't really know what we're getting ourselves into right now. We're just trying to go and make this deal. We wanna make this happen with this family. We wanna get this coffee. We're at the security checkpoint right now. There's the guy, the security guy. I don't know if you can see him. He's talking with Arturo right now. Dan, gracias. I'm gonna go. Anyone can't just go in here. You have to have a purpose. And with us, because we're buying coffee, they're gonna let us in. But like, you can't just like come here for a weekend or for a day off and just like go hiking or anything. This is a protected land. Good news and bad news. Sorry with the bad news. Uh, Didian La Nina is about a two hour hike into the jungle that way. Can't get there by car. And we don't have the gear to hike two hours there and two hours back. But the good news is we were able to find the family and we're able to find all the people that we bought the coffee from uh, last year and reconnect with all of them. They gave us a bunch of juice. They're bringing out some coffee. We're gonna go around and like see their coffee plants and check it all out. No? Um, he could produce 100 uh, latas, which is... He can produce 100 latas here. Yeah, but they would be offered uh, $10 per lata. Uh -huh. $10 a lata is 30 cents a pound. Yeah, exactly. And after he pays for the guys to clean up the log, after he uh, pays for the, you know, uh, picking it up and everything, he's left with, you know, close to nothing. But it would be much, much, much better if we can continue pursuing this direct connection with them because we can buy directly from, from them pay them a way better price. Mire, nosotros podemos eh, negociar para pagarles más uh -huh. directamente a ustedes. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Yeah, ¿Verdad? People used to buy their coffee for 30 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. That's insane. We'll and we told them like, we'll buy it for $3 a pound. It's like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. That's, That's what our business is all about. That's what this is all about, is building direct relationships like this and making it mutually beneficial for all of us. And this way we have great coffee and we can rely on this great coffee and having access to this great coffee rather than having to go through a middleman which is unreliable and that fluctuates in price. And with them, because we're doing it directly, we can offer them a better price than any middleman can ever offer them. And not only that, but these guys have been getting taken advantage of for a while and being able to come in here and build these direct relationships, that's why all this is so important to us. This is exactly what we wanna do over and over and just keep building these relationships with not only people in Panama, but also other countries as well and just kind of change the way that coffee is done and that coffee is sold and coffee is roasted and everything that goes with it. All right, that's it for us, we're heading out. Super happy that we could reconnect with these guys. Super happy that we could buy some coffee from these guys. We bought around 1,300 pounds of coffee from that farm that you just saw. It's just gonna take a little bit of time for us to get into the lab, get it back to Boguete and all that with. You guys saw kind of how big the process was getting it here and moving 1,300 pounds isn't all that easy. But that's it for us from the Camarca. We're heading out of here. Why don't we just pick this up in a couple days when we finally get that coffee down to the lab. Yeah, it's now a few days later. We've gotten the 1,300 pounds of coffee from the Camarca to here in Boguete in our coffee lab, in our roastery. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. We're roasting it up right now. So today is Saturday and we're putting this video out on Sunday. So we're roasting all of this coffee fresh to order. So right now this coffee is available. There's a link in the top of the description where you can go. You can go to our website and grab a bag. But just a fair warning, we're pretty confident that this one's gonna sell out. We do have a limited number of bags available. So if you wanna get one, just hop on it right now. We're super, super, super excited about this launch, you guys. And this is such a huge deal for us. This is such a big, pivotal moment in our business. And we just wanna thank all you guys that have supported us so far. Um, it just means a lot to us. We decided to go with La Nina, with the name La Nina again, kind of as like a promise and kind of as like a dedication to keep our relationship with this family strong because this story isn't over. This trip for us is all about coffee. Drinking coffee, learning about coffee, making connections within the coffee industry. At the end, you're left with a dry mouth. You are. Yeah. Also just consuming way too much coffee. That's just kind of part of what goes with this whole thing, but we're back at the airport now. We're getting back on a plane. We got a little bit longer flight this time, and we're going here. Guatemala City. Three hours, another country in Central America. Huge coffee producing country that we're trying to build some connections with. This is our first time trying to build connections outside of Panama. Pretty scared, but pretty excited. So we have probably the most epic crew going to a very special place. You already told them, George? Yeah. Okay. And honestly, it's just so incredibly special to have all of these guys all together going on our first ever morning movement business trip. <laughs> I just showed up here and everyone started cheering. I don't know, I don't know what happened. Here's the community, it calls uh, Chakaya. And this little community, we have only 4,200 people in this community. 75% of the community here in Chakaya, they work on a coffee. But not only coffee, we're taking care of the environment, especially in this area, taking care of the lake, but through our coffee, through their coffee, providing food, education for the people in this area. Especially uh, this year we sent uh, 40 kids, new kids in the school. We get uh, school supply. Uh, sell a lot of our coffee in the States, but we go right to the farms. And we've bought coffee from the indigenous people of, of Panama. Uh, we, you know, everything we've done has been right from the farm. Um, it's better for everybody. We can pay more, and then we can get it. We can ball get a better price rather than having a, a middleman involved. So, um, connecting with you guys is great. And what we've also done is we've sold coffee with a story. It's not just regular coffee. It's a face to the person who's making, right. to the people who are making it. And it's uh, yeah, that's how we built our business, okay. and that's how we've done it differently. We're going into one of the farmers' homes to try some of his coffee, see what they got and just, uh, yeah, try it out a little bit. Cheers. Cheers to good coffee, baby. In Guatemala. In Guatemala. Guatemala. To Guatemala. Through, through our coffee here, the people survive. Otherwise, they have nothing to do. The people here, they make uh, six, seven dollars a day. People from the city come here, they take the advantage. They bring their truck and they pay very little money. How much? Can you tell us how much a pound? Yeah, a like uh, three cues, one pound. Three cat cells for one pound. pound. So, okay, so if you broke that down for a latte, that's, it's, the same, it's ten dollars a latte. That's exactly what the... Uh, I was just talking with the Nobe in Panama. And it was the same thing. Yeah. And what I told them, and what we'll tell you guys is, as long as the coffee is our criteria, we can pay at least 10 times. Huh. At least. Even two times. That ends our time here on this coffee farm. We're all getting on the boat, heading out of here. Just feeling pretty overwhelmed with everything. Reminds me a lot of the Camarca kind of feel, but just different. 
and just so happy to be doing what we're doing, making these connections, finding these people. The coolest thing about this whole experience is not only is this, you know, kind of essentially a business trip for all of us, but at the same time, it's just, it's been so much fun and it's been just so rewarding to just see this whole process and to make all these connections and uh, it just brings so much more purpose to what we're doing. I've never been more excited to build up this coffee business in my life. Adios! Gracias! And humidity outside, it just does not work. This is my first official time standing in the strawberry. Feels pretty nice. But the next question is from This Off Grid Life. What up? How is the cafe construction in Vermont going? It is going pretty amazing. Um, it is, of course, a little bit more slow going than I think we would hope as anything but um we'll put a couple updated photos of where it's at right now there's still a lot more work to go um, which we're planning on doing a lot once we get up there but our plan is still to open in october but we'll see fingers crossed it's kind of funny because putting your life out on the internet opens you up to a lot of questions and one of the most common questions we get asked probably the most popular question by far is how do you pay for all this how do you afford all this? The building materials, the camera gear, the piece of land, the feed for the animals, the car, all that stuff, everything that's in our life. And it's kind of stood out to me how the grasp of small business and how someone can form their own business, create their own product and sell it has kind of diminished over the years. And in the worlds of the Amazons and the Targets and the Walmarts and the Starbucks and the McDonald's and these massive, massive corporations. I think small business has somewhat fallen to the wayside. In 2019, Kaylee and I formed our own small business space out of Panama. It's called The Morning Movement and it's a little coffee business. In creating and packaging and shipping and selling 300 gram bags of coffee to people all over the world is how we've been able to afford all this. So when we met Arturo for the first time, it was kind of crazy just how quickly the whole idea of selling coffee with him in collaboration on our YouTube channel, how quickly it came about. So I need to introduce you guys to Arturo. These are all of our YouTube friends, oh. right inside this lens. <laughs> all right, hello. <laughs> I had to tell you I have a bone to pick with you. Uh -huh. I'm, a little, I'm a little angry. <laughs> I made my coffee this morning. Why? Just wasn't the same after I had your coffee. <laughs> I was like, what is this garbage? Never be the same. We'll never be the same. Oh. That's the thing. That's the big, big problem. <laughs> Your coffee yesterday was so good. The coffee that we tried at Arturo's coffee shop was the best coffee we have ever had. It didn't need cream, it didn't need milk, it didn't need sugar. It was just perfect as is. And we wanted to share that with as many people as we possibly could. <laughs> We have chicken and, uh, so our collaboration and coffee chicken. with Arturo in his coffee uh, shop is finally ready. We were roasting the coffee out of his house. We were bagging it, shipping it to the United States. It was such an amazing way for us to make some more money to make this whole thing here a reality. If you guys are new around here and haven't met our coffee partner Arturo before, you're about to meet him shortly. We're on the way to go see him now, but before we introduce you, if there's one thing about Arturo you need to know, he is so passionate about coffee. I remember when, shortly after we launched our coffee business, Arturo came to us, I'll never forget this day, and he said, listen, there's a competition for brewing coffee. I wanna enter this competition, I think I can win, I think I'm one of the best coffee brewers in Panama. This is the coffee that you think is gonna name you the best coffee brewer in the world. This is, this is my prototype, yes. This is, um, it's a dream, my friend. And if I win this Panamanian competition, then I could represent the morning movement on the international stage in front of some of the most knowledgeable, best, well-connected coffee people in the world. So we talked about it for a while, but if there's one thing, we have so much faith in Arturo and so much trust in Arturo when it comes to coffee. So at the end, we said, go for it. And he just started training right away. For the pre-infusion, also known as the bloom, by an energetic 76 grams pour into each dripper at a time, always in circular motion. As I remove, there are also hints of delicious wild peach, black organic tea, and brown sugar molasses. There for a few seconds before removing the lead, 
So when the day of the competition came, we were all so, so, so excited. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm feeling pretty confident, really. Yeah. We've prepared and we've practiced and we've, we've done everything we could do. For any of you guys that experience witnessing someone in their craft and someone that is just so, so passionate about their craft, it's almost like palpable that that energy and that passion is just so, so beautiful to witness. And Arturo was so nervous. We all had so much faith and so much trust that he was going to crush it, that he was going to win. The whole presentation was just so beautiful. There was so much passion. We were all in absolute tears by the end of it. So we ran up to him at the end of the presentation to give him a big hug and to celebrate. And then we realized that he made a huge mistake. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. You just finished your competition. Uh huh. You just there's that photo of you with your yeah. hands up. Uh -huh. You just finished your presentation. I know. What was the moment that you realized you didn't pour the coffee for the judges? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I went, I hugged my family, I hugged my wife, my kids, and I thought I'd done everything all right. And then I think it was you guys that came along and asked me, like, when are you supposed to pour over the coffee? I'm like, I was the bringer of bad news. <laughs> and at that moment, I didn't really know if that was going to really um, take me out of the competition, disqualify me, or if they were going to pour it anyways. So we get to the award ceremony and we don't really know what's going to happen. And when they go to announce the, you know, what place everyone came in, and they started with eighth, eighth place. And you came in last. Yeah. How did you feel in that moment? And then how did that like propel you through these last few years? Well, at that moment I felt very, Honestly, I felt ashamed. I felt I failed you guys. I felt, you know, my family. I felt the team. Um, and but I also realized that I, it it had to take more from me for the next time around. And I always, from that moment, I said I have to do it next year. I have to do it next time. The number one reason is I want to close that cycle. I want to, you know, put an end to that circle of me not pouring the coffee. Uh -huh. I wanna, <laughs> as I, you know, it's like that one of those unresolved issues in your life that you just get, have to get rid of. You know, you're like, I need to move on from this thing. Now say something to yourself in your head, your little mantra. Uh -huh. whatever, your mantra. Whatever makes you happy, whether it makes you loose or silly, whatever. Say it, close your eyes. You Lord, you alone are the portion of my cup. So Arturo's been practicing his presentation a bunch. I will say that there has been some nerves going on and a little bit of hesita hesitation with some of the presentation. Café Panameño en Cuarcoyama. Sorry, let's begin again. Let's do it again, let's do it again. Artie, you gotta push through, man. What did you say that was wrong? Okay, I promise I'll push through right now. Okay. Are you nervous? <laughs> Does that make you more nervous? <laughs> How many times have you done this presentation? I've practiced 47, 48 times. You know exactly how many times? Yeah. This is number 49? This would be number 49. Well, I want to reach at least 70 or 80. So we have a long way to go in a couple of days. What are we, 48 hours from the competition? And you're going to do? That means you have to do one every hour. <laughs> I want to do as many as I can. <laughs> But we've been practicing a bunch and honestly, I just couldn't be more excited to see Arturo present in less than 48 hours. In celebration of all this, in celebration of everything that's happening and all the way that we've come, we are launching a brand new coffee. And what would be more fitting <laughs> than Willy and Wonka? Two different coffees that we have that we're launching. One is a Tipico Washed and one is a Pacamara Natural. And the whole point of this is to give you guys at home the opportunity to be the judge. These two coffees really contrast with each other. 
Uh, one is a very high-end traditional profile uh, with some citrus and flowers notes that are very elegant. And the other one is a, kind of a bolder, it's a natural, but it's a room slow dry process which extends in a controlled environment. And for me to dumb it down for some of you guys out there, <laughs> Think of the Willy as kind of like more chocolatey, and then think of the Wonka <laughs> as more like sweet and candy-like, yeah. which makes these names so fitting. <laughs> the producer of this coffee, Jose David, he said something to us while we were actually underneath a geisha tree, which is a very funny place to get some wisdom dropped. But he said something to us that inspired us, and I'll just drop that in here. And the whole thing, you know, when it stops, is when you stop sharing. Like, if you're a sharer and you stop doing that, just because you just your life is dull all the blessings in your life stop right there in that moment just because you are not willing to be open you will drink that perfect cup for yourself and alone <laughs> alone of you guys that missed our last video arturo is our partner in this whole morning movement coffee business and he's our coffee roaster here in panama and he's competing today in the panama best of panama Brewers Cup. So he is competing to be the best brewer in all of Pana Panama. And if he wins today, then he goes to compete in the World Cup. This wasn't Arturo's first rodeo. He had competed in this competition in 2020. And what we all learned was just having a great story wasn't good enough to name you the best brewer in Panama. You also had to have an amazing coffee. And this time around, Arturo had that. He had arguably one of the best coffees ever produced in the whole world. The variety is called Mokita, and Arturo was presenting it in this competition for the first time, and we knew it was gonna shake up the whole coffee scene here in Panama. We're going You're the places. Man, dude. We're, the man. Going places. We're going places. We're going places, baby. Give me some of the emotions, Arturo, that are going through your mind right now. I'm really focusing on the presentation. I wanna do the best for the producer, the best for the team, and the best for my family. Laser focus, bro. Laser focus. Is it? The last competitor before Arturo goes on just finished, so that means Arturo's next. So for those of you guys who don't know Arturo, not only is he one of our very, very special friends, but just seeing where he came from, living in Venezuela, working as a taxi driver, and then uprooting his whole entire family to come to Panama when things started going south in his home country. He basically came here with nothing. He then soon started working in the coffee industry. He first started out moving 100 pound bags of coffee in a warehouse and then seeing where he is now, owning this coffee business with us, it is truly such an honor to have him, not only again as a friend, but also working alongside with us within this business. So when Arturo got up on stage and he started his presentation, I can't explain how I felt with anything other than euphoria. It just felt like, so it felt so good to watch him put in so much effort and then just to start his presentation and just move so flawlessly and seamlessly and just deliver exactly what he wanted to deliver. Arturo is a sharer, especially with coffee. He has so much knowledge and he wants to share everything that, that he knows and everything that he learned and you can just tell he's in his element when he's doing that and as his presentation moved on and he got through parts that he had struggled with over and over again and he just moved through them all so beautifully uh we were all in tears we were all in awe and we just loved it was just such an amazing moment watching him do his thing up there arturo couldn't have represented himself or the coffee any better than he did. He was flawless. And as we were getting to the end, as we were getting to nine minutes and 50 seconds, we were all holding our breath because you have exactly 10 minutes to present. And if you go to 10 minutes in one second, you're disqualified, you lose. But what we know is Arturo has practiced this over and over again. So as the time started moving to Nine minutes and 55 seconds, 56 seconds, 57 seconds, 58 seconds. Right when the clock hits, nine minutes and 59 seconds, he calls time. 
He ended the presentation right with one second left. He gave as much information and as much knowledge and shared as much as he could with the time that was given to him. And it was just like so impressive. 55 something. You yeah. poured the coffee too, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. I had my clock and when I said time, I pressed it. So, and when I said, when I finished that I said time, it was already beep, 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 beep. So. I heard that. I was like, uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that's why I said so quickly, time, you know, but I mean, you killed it, bro. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. We were all thinking that, man, he has a really, really good chance at leaving with this trophy. And if he leaves it with this trophy, we're all going to Australia in one month to compete in the World Cup. So then it was time for the award ceremony. And we kind of knew how this went, that they were going to call the names from last place to first place. So they get up on stage and they get ready to call the last place name, the person that came in seventh place. And it was just going through my mind over and over. Don't say Arturo Venegas. Don't say Arturo Venegas. Don't say Arturo Venegas. In seventh place, we Arturo Venegas. He came in last. We're assuming he got disqualified for something and we just don't know what it could possibly be. Uh, I don't think in the beginning that they came to the realization or to the conclusion that these were decoration items. Keep going. It may, it may seem silly for a lot of people, but this is, this is what we do, you know? This, this is who we are. There's no other way. Keep going. Keep going. Man. I'm giving you a freaking hug, man. We love you, bro. Thank you for being the team that I need. <laughs>, why I want to make as much progress as possible right now. I feel like I'm letting you guys in on a big secret, but Kaylee and I are only going to be in Panama for another seven days, and then we're leaving for a while. Hey, look, it's Artie! For almost a year and a half now, we've been working on opening the roastery, which is our coffee roastery and our cafe that we're opening up in Stowe, Vermont. So every week we've been having conference calls with our team, working on building this thing out, working on getting all the licensing, all the permitting, doing all the construction, the plumbing, the electrical, buying espresso machines and countertops and everything that goes into opening a brick and mortar space. And we've come to the point that we're basically ready to open this darn thing. We're planning to open it in October. So we're planning on going back to the States in just one week. So not that much time. It's been amazing. And we're super excited for this last week, but we're also super excited to go back to the States. Well, this is it. This is our last video before we leave Panama for a while. Yeah, baby! Just had to see that. <laughs> We're whipping up some coffee, and this is actually my new favorite morning drink right now. This is called Cascara, or some of you may know it as coffee cherry tea. It's actually made from the fruit in the skin of the coffee fruit. So your coffee bean, if you guys are drinking any coffee right now, that bean actually started inside of a fruit. And that fruit is freaking delicious, and when you put delicious fruit in a tea, it's also delicious. Everywhere that we've been going recently, we've been bringing cascara. It's like cascara has replaced our coffee addiction. Maybe because there's still a little bit of caffeine in there. It's like a third of the amount, but it's also just so delicious. It's hands down the best tea I've ever had in my life. So we just made a bunch of cups of coffee cherry tea, hung out on the beach with our crew, just kind of took in the whole day. <laughs> this time going back to the States feels very different. It feels like we're going back on a mission because we are. We're going to open up the roastery, going to open up, we're going to open up a cafe and a coffee roastery, growing our business. It feels crazy, it feels wild right now. So even though we're back in the States, this adventure is not gonna stop. We have so much to do here, so much to see, so much to accomplish. 
So let's just pick this up tomorrow. This isn't a vacation. We're here on a mission. Say bye bye, Grammy! Bye! Bye bye! So we've been driving for almost four hours from central Massachusetts all the way up to almost northern Vermont to Stowe and it feels so surreal doing this drive right now because we have been fulfilling all of our coffee orders, basically running our whole coffee business out of Jordan's mom's house for the last three years. So driving up to our first official morning movement headquarters just feels unbelievable right now. There's so many emotions running through all of us. We have the whole caravan, me, Jordan, Saren, TJ, Sadie, and Lola, of course, and we're gonna be arriving there real soon, and we just can't freaking wait to just step foot inside of that space and just be there. <laughs> there it is! <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. <laughs> We've been working on building out this roastery from Panama for the last... <laughs> We've, been working on... We've been working on building out this roastery for the past year, and we haven't stepped foot inside. The last time we saw this space, it was nothing but studs and an unfinished floor, and I'm sure you guys can imagine we're all very excited, including Lola. And yeah, we haven't seen this yet, so we're all gonna experience this together. Oh my god. Hi, Nana, go ahead. Go ahead. She all of that by hand. That's not Not that, look at this. Oh, you can see. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You ready? Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of our hard work, dude. Look at all of our hard work. There it is. All right, everything feels pretty overwhelming right now, as I'm sure you can imagine. We've been looking at photos and videos and thinking about this place now for a long time and it feels like that we're just taking a huge step right now in something that we've put so much effort and time and love uh into and yeah we're actually sleeping in here tonight because we're moving into an apartment tomorrow and it's not ready yet so we're all saying how this is something that we're really looking forward to is crashing in the roastery space and uh yeah just spending the whole night hanging out in there All right, so it's been a few days since we talked to you guys last and a ton of stuff has happened and a ton of progress has happened. As you can see from behind me, we have this brand new countertop that just got put in. And we're also finally moved in here. We're not sleeping in the roastery over here like we were before. We have a temporary place we're staying in until Kaylee and I get our new tiny house. But I don't wanna to talk too much about that. That's gonna be for a future video right now. This is all about the roastery in this space. For those of you guys that have missed part of this story, I was laid off from my corporate marketing job in 2017. I was looking a lot different back then than I look now. And I was also kinda, I feel like I was a totally different person. But since that moment, since walking out of that office building, I've been on this mission to never ever go back. The two of us knew that in order to make it on our own, we had to start our own business and we had to build something that was ours. And since 2017, We've tried to do that over and over again. The first thing that we did was we started a candle business where we'd pick up bottles, we'd pick up trash along the side of the highways and turn them into candles. We'd cut the tops off, we would clean the bottles out, we'd fill them with the scented wax, we'd package them up really nice, and we ran that whole business out of our bus. And that really, that really just allowed us to keep going. And when the candle business didn't work out, it was it was too much work for a 90 square foot school bus. We tried other things. We tried to make bracelets, we tried to make necklaces, and we started a little jewelry company, and that didn't really work out too good. So then we started making our own music and recording our own music and recording it and selling it, and that didn't work out too good because we just weren't really that good. And that's kind of been our journey through the United States and Central America is just like, trying to find our way and building our own business to support ourselves and 
Then we kind of fell into this coffee thing and it was really just pure luck. Our coffee business, The Morning Movement, was really our fourth try at building our own brand. And after failing over and over again, we learned so much along the way on that whole process and we were able to take all that knowledge that we had and put that into this. And we've been working on building this coffee business for the last three years now. So being here, having our own space, having all of our own gear, having just all this coffee behind me. This is 6,000 pounds of coffee. We're just ready to go. We're ready to get this thing up and running. It's been such a journey to get here. It just feels so good to just be sitting on this big pile of beans and just looking at everything that we've accomplished and everything that we've done. And um, yeah, it just feels surreal. This is a big moment. Our espresso machines are getting delivered. <laughs> Honey, it only makes sense that a dewy pile is delivering our espresso machines to the morning movement. Anything, never will know. This is a Sadie size. <laughs> We're giving the Dalla Corte a little test drive and it's just, it just feels so, so dang good right We're going to be over caffeinated. Ooh. Oh my goodness. We didn't buy this Airstream just because we missed van life. This also serves a very important purpose for us and that's that we can park right outside of our roastery and coffee shop that we're in the process of opening. We've been making a ton of progress in here every single day. There's people doing stuff in here that I'm not qualified to do in this country, like electrical. All of these wires right here were just run, and that powers all 14 of these outlets that are behind our coffee bar. And we finally finished putting up all these lights over the coffee bar. And we now have this bar back, which this three-bay sink is gonna go in. But I gotta say, this three-bay sink came kinda Dinged up. I usually complain a lot about materials in Panama, and here in the States, it's kind of the same thing. We really just have the installation of this roaster left, and then all the plumbing, and then we're basically done. We just need to do the inspections and all of that junk. So if you're wondering when we're gonna open, I don't know yet. Maybe October, maybe November, maybe December, but I hope we don't have to wait that long. But the good news is we're still super busy with coffee stuff. Our business is already up and running. So even if things do get delayed with our cafe and our roastery, it's not the end of the world. Oh my God. Honey, you need to come smell this. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Doesn't it smell like bacon cookies? It feels so good, honey. First crack! The first pop! This is, ah, this is so much fun. If you guys have ever made popcorn before on a pan, roasting coffee on a pan is like the exact same thing, with maybe like, there's a little bit more creativity, because you can stop it at the perfect roast level. I'd say we've reached a light roast. What do you want to get to? Let's do a little medium roast. Maybe like a medium dark, honey. I'm saying like, like the fall time. Like, yeah, you know? let's do it, let's do it. Three, two, one. Pull it, honey, pull it. Pull it, pull it, pull it honey. Now the trick is about cooling it down as fast as possible. Boom. Oh. All right, let's get it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the coffee up in the air and all the shaft will blow away and then all the coffee will land back in there. Oh my God. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I pancakes for dinner and pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> I kind of feel like I've been battling some imposter syndrome recently. Really since we've gotten to this roastery up here in Stowe, Vermont. Uh, there's just so much to do. And since we got here a month ago, I just haven't really done anything. And it's not that I haven't been doing anything, like I've just been sitting on the couch, but I haven't been doing the stuff that really needs to be done, which is building this space out. We had a target date of opening up this coffee roastery for October 15th. It's now October 17th. So that day's come and gone, and we're just not even close. Our coffee roaster isn't even installed yet. We have all of the ventilation just sitting over here. We have shelving over here. Our coffee bar is, it's, it's getting there, but it's kind of a mess. But I feel like I've just been too scared to do anything. I haven't touched this space, I haven't built anything, I haven't done anything in here. And I've been building stuff 
consistently for the last three years on our farm in Panama. And here in this space, of, we've, we've been hiring people to do everything and I don't know, I just feel like I haven't had the confidence to tackle any of this stuff. Kind of what's happened is now everything's been getting delayed and everything's been so slow. And so at this point, I feel like I just need to get my hands dirty and I need to take this project over. We need to get this thing done. I'm ready to get to work and grind this thing out and get this roastery open. I don't know, like, I think we gotta leave this thing open. I kinda wanna look out of it. You know every day I come in here? <laughs> Amy and I have spoken a little bit about it. Just like spend the day over here helping us. We're gonna be on the screw right, right there. Right. Do you want me to hold it up there and we can use yeah. it and mark it? Yeah, let's go there. I have a circular saw. working on finishing up painting the outside but now I got to shift my attention to the inside. We had to have a big hole cut in the side of this wall. It's been patched up and now we need to sand off all of this spackle that's on here which is just going to put dust everywhere and get a fresh coat of paint on this. All right well that went about as I expected. We're loving how this place is looking so much. We're wrapping up our work day and we're all pretty exhausted as you guys can imagine. So we're just gonna take this view in of all the progress that we made and go to bed. Cause we're exhausted. Now that we got our housing situation all situated, we can get back to work inside the roastery. Our coffee roastery is gonna make such a massive transformation today. It's gonna look so different by the time this day's done. What do you got there, honey? Do you know how you figure out if a stud finder works? How do you know? So this whole back bar area here is gonna look, it's gonna look, it's gonna look, it's gonna look so different by the end of this video and it's really, really gonna start looking like a coffee roaster in here. Our menu is gonna be so different than a traditional cafe because first of all, we're not gonna have any food. You're just gonna be able to get coffee here. Second of all, there's not gonna be any sitting down. Everything's gonna be to go. And third, we're not gonna have any batch brew. So you know when you go into a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks, you say, give me a black coffee and they just pour, pour it out of this massive machine. We're not gonna do that. Everything's gonna be brewed fresh right at the moment that the person orders it. We really wanna showcase the quality of the coffee and we're setting up our menu that way. So we're really trying to make every single cup taste as good as it possibly can. Dang, you guys. Just having this menu up right now, I feel like changes the whole vibe of this space. <laughs> this is now Sadie's new favorite thing is to just give very aggressive kisses just constantly. It's an adult layer. Oh, it's so cute. Lola girl, did you find your spot in the roastery? <laughs> This is where you're gonna hang out <laughs> when we're doing work. We're closing in on the last days of building out this roastery and it's time to get all hands on deck. So I brought in my secret weapon. This is your time. Okay. Hi guys. <laughs> what do you have to say? I have to say it's nice to be here and <laughs> welcome back and let's get going. That's my dad. <laughs> Yeah, 
do you do? I hope you know, honey. Right, Once cool. we start with this tile work, right. you're baby duty, and I am. No. I'm grabbing. Hundred no. percent. Today we're gonna be doing the backsplash for our bar back here, and we have all this beautiful handmade tile that we're gonna be putting down. So we learn something new every day. One thing I did not know is that you can rent equipment from Home Depot. So we got this tile cutter for the next 24 hours. Hopefully we can finish it before then. Sage was getting a little pent up in the roastery. So we're just running around like lunatics in the parking lot now. <laughs> and she's loving it. <laughs> Remember that piece of crap we used down in Panama? <laughs> this is some good cheese right here. Just fill this spot up. First tile is going down, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Baby. That's Uncle Lardy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to give him a kiss? <laughs> We're all having a moment right here, just taking a step back and looking at this tile right now. Sarah just had a moment. She 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 was crying. I shed a single tear. She gave <laughs> you a couple more. And the reason being is this decision on this color tile, this style tile, this pattern of tile, literally took months. We put so much thought into just this <laughs> tiny little section of the roastery. They cry over tile. <laughs> We're an emotional bunch. <laughs> we are, we are a very emotional bunch. And uh, it's not done yet. We still have to put all the grout inside and then frame it out. And then of course the black faucet that's gonna come out here, but we're just loving this right now. It looks so dang good. Everyone's emotions right now are pretty high as you can imagine. There's just so much excitement and just like, it feels like we're gonna pull this off. It feels like things are really starting to come together. We've been planning this for over a year, every single detail that's in this space and to finally be putting them into place and see it all kind of like, you know, just to see it all come together is just amazing, but I'm wiped. It's been a long day. It's. 12, 14 right now. It's getting late. It's time for me to go into the Airstream and go to bed. Second to the installation of the roaster, today is probably one of the biggest days, I would say, at the roastery. Here we go, these two fat posts that are going to each of these holes, they're going up. Oh yeah, baby, it's a, it's a little fat, but that's okay. No, it's my first time. 373 and 5 8. Perfect. Ready? A little more. There. 
Don't move. Uh, ye. You got a marker? It's enough, though. That's how we do it. Holy shiz, you guys. This is so exciting. We're fine. Mm -hmm. Let's get the sign. Let's get the sign. Come on, honey. We got the sign. Come on, sweetie. We got the sign. Buzzkill. Absolute buzzkill. I was trying, I was getting all excited. I thought we were going to get the sign. Now you're saying we got to screw some shades to the sign. We yeah. can't put the sign up. Oh, right so we're just going to go ahead and put all of these plates on the sign first, just so that we're prepared so that when we get it up there, we can just and look out for these cross screws. Screw right in. I just went and got the rest of the crew. We all need to witness this moment together. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're just getting to the last few hours left of daylight i am determined to get the rest of this grout done today we're almost there we probably have a third of the way left to go and uh so much progress has happened in these last couple days it's just so encouraging so exciting seeing it all come together This just feels unreal right now. Just to see it looking like this. It's mind blowing. It's unbelievable. Just in the last two days, I feel like this place already looks so different. Just everything that's gone into getting this to this place. Everything that Arturo has done, everything that Arturo's family has done, everything that Sarah and TJ and Sam and Rodrigo and everybody, the whole team, Everyone's just put in like so much effort and so much work just to get this place to where it is right now. It's not done yet, but it's, it's really getting there. Like it's really starting to come together. And I think my favorite part about all of this too is like not only are we working with all of our best friends and our family down in Panama, but we're also getting our dads involved and just seeing, you know, looking at this roaster, the first thing I think of is my dad. Looking at that sign, the first thing that we're going to think of is Doug. And Sadie's just pumped about it as well as you can tell. <laughs> but that's where we're gonna let you guys go on this one. We're beat. Gonna go and shower and go spend some time with my dad. But before you guys go, I just wanna let you know that we've been posting videos on the Morning Movement YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna see more videos about coffee, behind the scenes of building out this space, a bunch of stuff like that, we've been posting videos up there. So I'll link it in the top of the description. If we're gonna tell a story, about coffee. Mm. Where do we start? Oh man. So it's so funny because I feel like this didn't dawn on me until like we had been dating for a couple years. I was like looking back, going through all the details of like the first moments that we had met, the first conversations we had had. I was a restaurant manager. Kaylee was a server. Kaylee was a waitress. It all started with the first sentence that was ever spoken. <laughs> I just turned to her and said, I gotta go get some coffee. And I told them, you go get that coffee. <laughs> I would say we got it, sweetie. We got the dang coffee, honey. We ain't got the dang coffee. Actually, coffee means the way and how my life changed. Before coffee, I was little Rodrigo. I was, I was, I was little Rodrigo. And when I met Arturo, Ever since I met Arturo and he explained me about coffee, like, dude, you need to drink this. And I was like, all right, let's give it a sip. And all of a sudden, like, ever since then, everything has been just a roller coaster of emotions, things happening, blessings, and just like changes, amazing things, experiences. I met you because of coffee. I came to the land because of coffee. I am where I am because of coffee, dude. This, this, this. This is all about coffee. So this community that we've created surrounding coffee does not stop in Panama. 
We've been running this coffee business outside of Jordan's mom's house for the last two years and we've gotten to the point of it being successful enough where we can open this brick and mortar spot right here in Stowe and it's actually allowed us to bring in two of the most incredible souls onto this journey with us. I truly feel like I have to pinch myself every single day with the fact that I'm literally working with my best friend. It's so funny how people tell you, you know, on and on again, how to never go into business with your best friend. And we have my best friend from childhood. We have literally known each other since six years old. And here we are, you know, almost 15 years later. And we're opening a business together. We're opening this coffee shop roastery together. And it honestly feels so surreal. So when Sarah and her boyfriend TJ decided to officially join our community and become the general managers of the roastery here in Stowe, Vermont, we immediately just like started taking action. And they have been alongside us through every single step of the way of getting the roastery ready to open and we're just so, so excited and grateful to have them here running the day-to-day -day operations of this space. And there's one last part of this community that we cannot leave out, and that's all you guys watching this at home. Whether you've been along with us from the beginning, or maybe this is the first time that you've watched us, we want to invite all of you to connect with us and connect with our community around coffee. So Absolutely. we want to do something that I think no one's ever done before and invite all you guys to learn how to roast coffee at home. You might not know this. But you can do it, and it's actually extremely easy and so much fun. So up on our website right now, we have these bags of coffee for sale, and you have to see the logo of this, because that's Kaylee <laughs> roasting coffee in a pan. And this is green, unroasted coffee in here. And what we want to do is invite you guys to learn how to roast this with us. So on Saturday, November 19th, we're going to do a live stream and teach anyone who buys one of these bags not only how to roast coffee, but just connect around coffee, talk about coffee, learn about coffee. We're gonna have Arturo with us, who we've labeled our roast master. <laughs> He's gonna help teach all you guys how to roast coffee, what to look for. And just an FYI, all of these roasting kits will actually come with a step-by-step -step guide of instructions on how to do this. And genuinely, Jordan and I have probably done this at least 25, 30 times. And the best part of it all is after it's done roasting and it's cooled down, you grind it up in your coffee grinder and you pour that cup and you share it with whoever's with you, whether it's your family, your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. Thank and you. just seeing the reaction and telling them like, I freaking roasted this shiz. And then you guys can have your own connections around coffee, maybe not in the middle of the jungle of Panama, but maybe around <laughs> your kitchen table or your living room or wherever you drink coffee. Absolutely. So if you guys wanna go try this for yourselves, you can click the link in our description box below or you can go to themorningmovementcoffee.com. But we're so excited for this, for you guys to share this and to have you guys experience this at home. And we just wanna thank you again for all your love and all your support. This is what failure looks like. We've gone on a lot of journeys with you guys. We've had successes and we've had failures and we've called it like it is. And in this one, standing in this coffee roastery right now, this one's a failure. So the plan was to open about a month ago and that hasn't happened yet. And we actually just got word that we need to get all of our architectural plans redone. But we can't stay here right now. We, we need to go back to Panama. I've talked about it a little bit, but I haven't really gotten into detail about um, just kind of how hard the last few months have been. Maybe the last six months. Um, I mean, everyone tells you that opening a business is hard, but I didn't think it'd be this hard. Like, I mean, that, maybe that's just my own naivety. But just the amount of time and effort that's gone into opening the roastery, expanding our coffee business, and moving into our own space from the insurance to the inspections to the permits to the licenses to all the legal stuff and the insurance and the bank accounts and 
kind of just goes on and on. Um, man, it's a lot. And right now it feels like that whole journey of opening the roastery is at an end. And at an end in a good way. And it's because basically the whole opening process is done. I'm very excited to say that we're going to be opening the roastery in Stowe, Vermont at 1815 Pucker Street on December 1st. You better be there or be square. <laughs> I can't believe this is real. <laughs> but for real, you guys, this is like the real deal. It's freaking happening. And we want to see all your faces there. Or as many as many as you guys can, can come. If you guys are in the area and you want to come and hang out, you want to have a cup of coffee made by us or our crew, uh, we're going to be there. We're going to be flying back for the grand opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be there for a few days. So December 1st. We hope to see you guys. We'll be open from 8 to 12. I can't believe we just announced this. This is like so surreal even <laughs> saying that this is happening. I don't even know how this was going to come about, but it's kind of just like, because we just found out today. Yeah. So it's like, there's not like this big announcement. It's just, we're just telling you. So we hope to see you guys there. We'd love to put a lot of your faces to the names in the comments or the names in the emails. So Absolutely. I can't wait for it. Count down the days. So this year I decided I'm gonna give everyone something that they can consume, that they can drink, and that once they drink it, it's gonna be gone. And it's not just gonna be something that they're stuck with. And with us spending so much time recently on opening up a coffee roastery, opening up the roastery in Stowe, Vermont, expanding our coffee business, I decided that for all my friends and loved ones, I wanna give them the best coffee in the whole world. And it just so happens that we live in the town where the best coffee in the world is grown. We live in Boguete, Panama. And every year, the best coffee farms in this town take their best 100 pounds of coffee, just 100 pounds, and they all bring it to the Best of Panama auction. So the first step was to buy a sample kit that contained all 50 samples that were gonna be going up for auction. And out of all 50, there were three that we were obsessed with. B730 and B841. How exciting is this, man? I'm Let's excited. go, baby! Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so scared. He's crashing the producer's party. I'm so scared. To Eclipse. I got Eclipse, Jansen's, so I thought this auction was gonna last for like an hour or two, but I really didn't know what I was in for. And it was five or six hours later, and this thing was still going on. We're approaching midnight now. It is 11.55. Five hours of auction and counting. So as this auction was coming to a close, I was losing my mind because the cost of some of these coffees was outrageous. It was over $2,000 a pound. And I don't know about you guys, but that's just absolutely ridiculous. Spending 2, 000, over $2,000 for green coffee. It's not even roasted yet. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. That's it. Is it over? When the auction ended, by the time it ended, I think it was right around like two or 3 a.m. <laughs> It just, the clock just hit 2.03 in the morning. I didn't think it was gonna take this long. But I gotta say, when this auction ended and all the results came out of everyone who won all these lots and all these legendary coffee brands were in there like Black Gold, Saza Coffee, Coffee Tech, it was really funny to then see the morning movement, not listed once but three times. But this year, this is what all of my coffee gifts are gonna look like. The rare coffee sampler kit, three of the best coffees in the world. All my friends and family are getting these, so if you guys are watching, just know that this is coming your way. But if you guys wanna try some, if you wanna get this as a coffee gift for your friends or family, or a coffee lover in your family, or maybe you love coffee, and you wanna try three of the best coffees in the world, we did have some extra available, so there's a link down in the description, but we do have a very, very limited amount, so we are gonna sell it pretty quick. How good every time we go to a coffee farm, I feel like we're on a bridge like this. <laughs> We've gotten all the way down into this valley to where this coffee grows, to where this super special geisha grows. We're at Finca Senizos, and this place is just... I'm, I'm honestly, I have no words. I'm it's, speechless right now. It's just unbelievable. It's so beautiful. In our kit, this coffee is called Callus, and that's because of all these Callus flowers mixed in with the coffee trees. This area, it's a Callus lot. It's a very special lot because we grow uh, Callus at, at the same time of our coffee. 
we don't use pesticide we don't use herbicide herbicidas and we try to be eco-friendly uh, so the way we grow coffee is very special these exact trees are the trees that we bought the coffee from and the coffee that we bought is by far the most we've ever paid on coffee we paid over a hundred dollars a pound for that coffee and that was the going price at the auction that's not just some made-up price that's what international coffee buyers around the world were willing to pay for this coffee we were just willing to pay one dollar more and i think you guys can understand why so i think the biggest thing that i am so so excited about is that we're supporting estella in probably her most important lot of the year we purchased that lot just knowing that she is she's a one woman show she, she does <laughs> all you. of this pretty much on her own and uh, it's just so inspiring to see and honestly i feel like the best way to describe the feeling that i'm feeling right now is just truly honored and just so inspired to meet oh, thank you another <laughs> another woman that is you know just badass, badass. badass. <laughs> it's time for us to leave finca los cenizos feeling inspired feeling humbled but feeling great now we're going on to the next coffee farm hola we just showed up at Finca Aguilar. All of a sudden, we're just on the back of a pickup truck now. Yeah. They're taking us out to the fields with all the coffee trees. Woo! Look at that. Look at that. Woo look at that. You should have told me we're going on a safari, dude. Well, I thought we were just going on a little ride. Look at us. This is the name of the game, bro. <laughs> the effort that it takes. To get people good coffee. Exactly. This is it right here, I mean, baby. You, you have no idea. <laughs> that was one of the craziest drives to get coffee I've ever taken. <laughs> and these exact plants right here is another coffee that we want at the auction. And this variety is Pacamara. And this is a Pacamara fruit here. But this coffee is actually a wash profile, which means they took all this fruit off. And if you look inside this fruit, is actually the coffee bean. So a wash profile means they took all the fruit off and then let it out to dry. We are very honored that you can try our coffee because we put all our love across all the generations uh, here and all the hands that work hard from uh, give you this coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the farms where some of the best coffee in the world is grown and seeing the exact plants where they're coming from is just so special. But not only that, what makes it the most special is seeing the people that are behind it and the work that they're doing to make it as good as it is. Adios! Adios. Gracias. Gracias. So we just left farm number two. Sade is completely passed out. Now we are on to the third and final farm. All right, so what's happening, Joel? Uh, there's, a, there's a tree down in the road, so we might not be able to get to the coffee farm. We're trying to try to find someone with a chainsaw so we can get there. Man, you would never know the things that people do to get coffee day in and day out. Five minutes later, we're, we're back on the trail. After over 30 minutes of driving down that gnarly dirt road, we have finally made it to Finca Los Lejones. One of the lots that we purchased was called Elias, and that fruit was grown right on these trees behind me. But what really makes this coffee special and what really makes this coffee different is that it was fermented. So the coffee was harvested on these trees and then immediately put into tanks to ferment. After spending a few days in there, that fruit is then put out to dry in African beds. And then the coffee fruit is peeled down to the coffee bean that you all know and love and that we get our hands on and then we get to roast. So we took the coffee from the farms down to our coffee lab, we unloaded it from our truck, brought it right into our roastery, and just immediately got to roasting. We perfected the roast profile for each coffee so that it tastes the absolute best that it can. 
and we've bagged all this coffee up and it's ready to go. So I'm super excited to be giving this to both of our friends and family this holiday season. And if any of you guys wanna give this as a gift too, or try it for yourself, there's a link down in the description below. Each bag of coffee will come with a letter from Kaylee and I talking about just how special this coffee is. And inside the bag will be not only the three samples of coffee, but a little card that gives details on the coffee itself, why it's so special, the farm that it came from, and just all that good stuff. I know a lot of you guys just finished up your Thanksgiving just want to say happy Thanksgiving to all you guys from our whole family here. You think so, huh? What else? <laughs> happy Thanksgiving to all you guys. We're actually getting ready to go back to the States to open up the roastery. So we're going to be heading out of here real soon. Well, here we go again. We're leaving Panama. We're leaving Lola's farm. But this time it feels a little bit different. This time it feels like we're on a mission to accomplish something that we've been working on for over a year. It was just about 18 months ago that we started working on opening up a roastery in Stowe, Vermont. And now after 18 months, we are five days from opening day. Gracias. It was always my dream to open my own restaurant. I even went to college to learn how to open restaurants. I went for hospitality. But when I started working in restaurants and kind of learning how it's done, learning how to run a successful restaurant, everything that I thought it was, it really wasn't. I always pictured a restaurant as being of a place to get an amazing meal that you couldn't have at home. Something that's made with care and with precision and with love and with skill. And what I realized is it turned into how can we cook this food as fast as possible with as little effort as possible and still make the customer happy. And I started to realize that was kind of the case in restaurant after restaurant over the seven years of working in restaurants that I was in. And that kind of turned me off from restaurants. I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. And when we started talking about opening this cafe, I think Kaylee, Arturo, and I kind of all had this vision of like, this is gonna be a place where people come and they'll never be able to make coffee like this at home. We want people to come in and try our coffee and have it just knock their socks off. There's a reason why our slogan is one bean at a time and it's because we literally sort all this coffee one bean at a time and make sure they're all perfect. So we have a pretty hefty to-do list that we gotta get through over the next four days. Holy shit, so we're opening in literally four days. That's insane to say. So we are all just gonna be grinding, just trying to check off as many of those things that we can over the next four days. Let's go, let's go. We're just gonna start, we're just gonna go, let's go. These photos are just some of the most special moments that we've had in this coffee business. And all of these pictures and all these memories just mean, this means so much to me.
Oh no. Oh. Oh no. What happened? Everything was great. Well. <laughs> this is what it looked like when we started. And now. There it is. We're officially done. Well, the sign still doesn't work, but we're hoping to get that done. Today is November 30th. So we're posting this in like a couple hours. So if you guys are watching this, we're filming this today. We're filming this the same day that you're watching it. And that's just kind of how our life is right now. It's just like, we're sharing these videos in real time. And that's just also so we can announce that tomorrow on December 1st, the roastery will be open at 8 a.m. Yeah. So if any of you guys are in the area, or if any of you guys want to come up and hang out with us, we'll be here from 8 to 12, and we'll be here Thursday through Monday, 8 to 12, for the month of December. So if you guys want to hang out, you know where we'll be. <laughs> we love to meet you, love to make you a coffee. Absolutely. And uh, Come meet Sadie. Sadie wants to meet all of you guys as well. <laughs> it's just madness right now. So the address is 1815 Pucker Street in Stowe, Vermont. Hope to meet some of you guys, and if not, We'll be sharing this whole journey, this whole story along the way. No matter if it's good or bad, if the building goes up in flames, or if... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's how we are for this one. We got a lot of stuff to do on our last day before our opening, so we're gonna go get after it. But we love you guys so much. Thank you for coming along on this journey with us. <laughs> Party! It's snowing. Bro, we wish you were here, but we're gonna make you proud. You should still feel proud. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. I wish you I was there to work as hard as you are. Thank you for you, bro. We need you to hold it down in Panama right now, but you'll get up here soon. Love you, Artie. Love you, bro. Oh my love you, Dolly. Bye, guys. All right. Are you feeling better? I feel like we're as ready as we can ever be. Let's get it, so. Okay. I don't think there's anything else to do. No, yeah, man. Just pour some coffee. <laughs> if you ask Sarah, it might be some different answers. What? Sarah. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys. Love you guys. We, love freaking, you guys. we freaking did it. Yeah. Even we worked no, our butts off. Even if no one shows up. We did it, we did it all this together. That's all that freaking matters. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely, bro. Preach. We're a squad, dude. We're a squad. You guys. And we already won because we got each other. Bro, that's beautiful, man. man. Absolutely. Love, love you guys, all right? Love, love, you. You. love you guys. Come on, Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> First one. Let's go, bro. When they go left, we go right. <laughs> and when we think we are nothing, and we stand as five. <laughs> I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> We're officially open for business. <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> Let's get on the sketchy one people button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's perfect. laughs> yes, dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys want some coffee or what? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Jordan. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excited to serve you guys some coffee today. <laughs> Every coffee, we have a different recipe. So this should be right down here. <laughs> At all costs. People must know that we are open. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Alright, I'm standing right here. <laughs> you mentioned one time. <laughs> you just keep bringing up the heat. Put the coffee. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
in the books, baby. That was freaking awesome. God, I don't believe in you. That was nice, cool. <laughs> yeah. Boom! Woo! We've been having a lot of late nights here in the roastery, but there's nothing better than trying to just like hanging out and going with the flow rather than just like trying to get out of here as fast as possible. We're basically just living in here. You know, it's like we got the Airstream, but 16 hours of the day is spent in here, including. Sadie is currently running around bare naked, bare bones, bare bum. <laughs> She's got a gnarly diaper rash going on right now. We're letting that sucker air out. <clears throat> what do you have to say? What do you think? I don't think you're phased at all by this diaper, <laughs> diaper rash. <laughs> Good morning. They do this. Day two. <laughs> <laughs> For the last few days, we've done nothing but focus on one thing, and that's to try to make people the absolute best cup of coffee that we possibly can. But that doesn't mean we didn't have enough time to do a few other things, like set up some Christmas decorations and start to think of the vibe that we want in here for the holidays. The roastery opens up at 8 a.m., and we're open from 8 to 12, and we can expect anywhere from like 50 to 100 people to come in in those four hours. So these two to three hours in the morning are so crucial to making sure that we're all set up for that time. So much of what we do in the morning is just dialing in all of our drinks, all of the coffees, the espresso, the pour over, everything that we do, we wanna make sure it's perfect. And believe it or not, but the coffee changes every single day. So we need to be adjusting grind size, temperature, dose, every variable that affects the drink, we're working on right now. It is just about 8 a.m. It's opening time. This is day number 11 that we've been open, but this is gonna be our first real snowstorm up here in Stowe, Vermont. These people know snow. They know how to drive in snow, and they love to ski, so we really don't know what we're in for. All right, first customer of the day is here. So we just lost power. It's kind of bringing back some uh, Panama vibes right now, <laughs> losing power. So I have a feeling we're not gonna be getting our power back for quite some time now. <clears throat> so Jordan is actually going to get our camp stove and our kettles. So even though we can't run the espresso machines and have our electric kettles going, we can at least do some pour overs that way kind of handle everything with just cash and uh, just keep making this thing, you know, run it. Keep, keep doing what we can to keep it running. Yeah, the niche, it's a, I think it's a European. Are you guys local or are you here to ski? Or? We're here to ski. Oh, are you nice. Where are you going to get like 30 inches or something like this? The sugars absorb from the fruit, the natural sugars. And the Keurig and the hotel we're at. Trash this is such a vibe right now, you guys. TJ got the solo stove going. I love it. I love it. Audio on. Mate, we're recording. We got audio as well. What's right. going on? Let me know when you're ready. We're all good. All dude. right. Good afternoon, skiers and riders. This is Andre with your morning movement snow report here in Stowe, Vermont. Everything's great. Let it snow. You like the snow, sweetie? <laughs> 
It's coming down. Oh my god. Oh I I love this. I love this. This is like the most magical day ever. <laughs> I love running a cafe. It's like bringing me back to my restaurant days, bringing me back to the days of just like, you just gotta get it done, man. Yeah, you gotta make it happen. You gotta do what you gotta do. So Jordan and I, we're actually planning on running this entire cafe, just the two of us, for the week after Christmas and between New Year's. So I've been spending the last couple weeks here trying to spend at least a couple hours every day just really honing in and dialing in my coffee making skills and uh, I'm, I'm so excited you guys. I am like so, so, so excited. All right, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> it's interpretive art, <clears throat> it's interpretive art. Hi, I'm home. Hi, sweetie. What are you doing? Cleaning. What did you get? A super coloring book. No way. Come give me a hug. Wait, Sadie. This is gonna be our last video from the United States for a really long time. The story's coming to a close. The story of opening our own business. I'm so mind blown, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are also mind blown, that this year is already coming to an end. We are okay. almost to 2023, which is just insane. And this story, this chapter of our story, is also coming to an end. We've been spending the last 18 months working on this roastery, and now we're at the point where it's open. We did it. We're done, and it's now time for Jordan and I to move on to the next part of the story. But first things first, we got a lot of work to do. This place has been our baby for the last 18 months. We have put so much effort, so much energy, so much thought into everything to do with this space, from the design, to the construction, to the plumbing, to everything. Every single decision in here was us and our team. So we told Sarah and TJ to take this week off. So they're taking a little vacay. Jordan and I are gonna be running the show. But the funny part about all of this is that I have never been a barista in my entire life. And tomorrow's my first official day working the bar. What do you got for espresso? First of all, welcome to the roast. Espresso. <laughs> Can I have an espresso? What kind of espresso? You yeah. want espresso or milk? So, uh, what's your name? Johnny. Johnny? Johnny Macaroni. Johnny Macaroni? Yeah. Wow, what a last name. How is uh, your childhood? It's... 618. We've been training for about 15 minutes. And we got a long way to go. Do you usually ask what kind of milk they want? It's good. It's just like when you go forward, you can just like go like that. It's a lot later now. It's 852. I don't remember when we started, but it's been a few hours. Drank a lot of coffee. Tasted a lot of coffee, made a lot of coffee. It's time to crush it tomorrow. Honey, I'm feeling that feeling like... You're nervous. I'm like so nervous and like tomorrow's like my first day of work. Even though it's like not really, but it feels that way. And Come on, sweetie. I'm scared. Give it to me. But I'm so excited. <laughs> That's it for today. Time to try to go to bed even though we're pretty caffeinated and uh, see what tomorrow has in store. See, today is the day. It's just me and you, my love. So Jordan's mom is actually up. She's gonna be helping out with Sade while Jordan and I work the bar. But uh, whoo, today is the day. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. I got my extra, extra large hoopy dupes on today for, <laughs> for a little bit of extra added Confidence. <laughs> All right, here we go. Day one, it's opening time. <laughs> Tired. 
long day. But this is just the beginning. This has only just begun. Kaylee and I have to run this cafe five days in a row. Just the two of us. So we've been getting an insane amount of people coming in thinking that we have roasted chicken. <laughs> the name's called The Roastery. And I think we got roasted chicken and roast beef. There was one guy who was so upset we didn't have roast beef. <laughs> it's actually, it got a little bit concerning with the amount of people who thought that. <laughs> so, and it's really funny because that didn't even cross our mind when we came up with the name. So we decided to bring some clarification to the name and add a little addition to our sign. <laughs> hey. Coffee. There it is, baby. We don't, there's no chicken in there's no chicken in here. Don't come here to try to get some chicken. <laughs> Day three, 5.17 in the morning. Slept on the couch last night because Sadie had a booger in her nose and we couldn't teach her how to blow it out. So she was making a lot of noise. Focus. Well, it wasn't as good as the last one. <laughs> it's so crazy the amount of details that goes into just running a cafe that is only selling coffee. That's all we're selling is coffee. We're not even doing food. And the amount of stuff that we constantly need to keep on alert with. It's crazy the amount of workload that there is even though we're only open from 8 to 12 in the mornings. You ready to have a good day? Yeah. yeah. Cold brew is ready. But I gotta say, these last couple days of Jordan and I running the show back here has been so, so, so special. For it to kind of just be the two of us Working alongside together. Day five, the last day. That's good. Keeps going up my nose. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Oh. You crying? A little bit. Why? Oh, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh. I've never been more tired in my life. That was that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. This is the amount of energy. The amount of people. I know. The amount of coffee. I know. The amount of hand selection. The amount of beads. The amount of water we went through. The amount of bags we went through. So one of the first stories that George told me when we were first dating was when he was in Italy and he went to this restaurant and there was this cute little old man and woman and they had had the restaurant for probably 50 years and it was just the two of them running it in the back. And that was like always my dream. I, I saw this couple and I was like, man, I hope that's me one day with like, my partner, whoever I fall in love with, just running a little restaurant, dancing, kissing each other, like talking to everyone, having a blast, and like, I don't know, just like having their love on display. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was never really on our radar, you know, until... These last few days. These last few days, and it was like so special, because I feel like, even though that wasn't like 
our this isn't like our full time thing. Obviously, we're gonna go back to Panama and go run the show down there. But like, we got a little taste of it. We got a little taste of it, and it was so much fun, and it was so special, and it just like brought that reassurance again. Just like I feel like we work so well together, and we communicate so well together, and it was just such a special. It was just so special. I love it so much. I love working with you. Too. I love working with you. Well, we're back in Panama now. We're back on the side of the mountain on our farm, and uh, this is the end. This is the end of the story of opening the roastery. It's open now, it's running, and it's at a point that Kaylee and I were able to leave it and let it run on its own with the team that we put in place. And we just couldn't be more excited, more happy, feel more fulfilled with everything that we've accomplished over the last, basically everything that you see in this video. The, that whole, the whole project of opening the roastery was about 18 months. But if you guys want to celebrate the opening of the roastery with us, we have these shirts for sale. These shirts that say, the roastery in Stowe, Vermont. In the back, the best part is the design that we have that shows the whole story of the roastery from our farm in Panama and the journey that that coffee takes by going through Arturo's hands and then being shipped over to the United States and getting to the roastery and getting roasted up and being served to you guys, or whoever's in need of a good cup of coffee. Not only was this design made by a local artist here in Boquete, Panama, but the prints are actually done by a local t-shirt printer in Burlington, Vermont, and we actually made a relationship, we made a connection with this printer, and going there and watching these shirts being made and seeing how it's done, it's just amazing. Like, it was so cool, and in another life, or maybe in another part in my life, maybe I'll do some t-shirt printing, because I was just super inspired. So there's a link in the description below if you guys want to eat your hands on some of these t-shirts. We do have a very limited quantity, so you're going to want to act fast. But regardless, thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for following along. Thank you for trying our coffee and following us along with this coffee journey. But let me just leave you guys with this. It's that this coffee journey is far from over. And we just can't wait to share more with you guys.